this day, Mafia 2 is still one of my favorite games of all time. And in this video, we're going to talk about all the things that makes it so good, but also how D3T utterly ruined this game. I mean, they absolutely sh** the bet on this one. From various texture glitches, character glitches, everything that you could possibly imagine, you'll see it in this video, and they really ruined it an incredible game. If you take nothing else from this video, if you've never played this game before, please play the original version, whether that's on console or on PC. It runs so much better, and the minor bumps in textures of the supposedly remastered version are not worth it, given the game-breaking bugs. In Mafia 2, 2K really mastered what it means to create a linear game. Every single mission is very diverse from the others, and everyone is very rewarding in its own unique way. If we dial forward to the third game, it seems like every single mission is just the same fetch quest, and there's no character to it whatsoever. Mafia 2 really sticks to the roots of a Mafia-based game, and they execute it in such an incredible fashion. The first mission I'm going to show here is Joe and Vito's first heist together that goes terribly south, as basically everything else in this game does. This is something that starts off as pretty frustrating as you're progressing through the game, as making money is really difficult, but it sort of adds a bit of character to the game as a whole, in that you expect all of these endeavors to go so poorly, and they still add other ways of building progression. And the characters, of course, are a way that this game really shines. You'll notice on my channel, I focus on games that have excellent character development and relationships between them. All of the charm in this game is made through its characters and the way they interact with each other. Of course, the game can be buggy. The gameplay is not extremely exhilarating. The gunfighting is not that great, but it is the way the missions are handled, the way the characters interact, is that what makes this game so, so good. Early on, we get a bit of backstory on Vito and how he ended up in prison, going to the war, and then coming back to America just to go down the same path he did when he started. Not only does it land him in prison again, but it leads to the destruction of the entire Mafia family in Empire Bay. Vito has such extreme conflicted loyalties, as he swears an oath into the family, between his friends and the orders that he's given. And it really breathes life into Vito as a character, as he feels so distinctly human in all of these interactions. After seeing how well the characters were done in this game, I just can't understand why they fell off so heavily in Mafia 3, and even in Mafia 1, the remake that just came out recently. They just seem so one-dimensional and uninteresting, and they're the type of characters where you don't really care about what happens to them in the end. They're just very throwaway, and that shouldn't be the case for the protagonist. I really think that's what makes Mafia 2 stand out as the main good game in the entire series, and really the only one that I recommend checking out at the end of the day. It really is a shame, because I was really looking forward to Mafia 3 originally when it was coming out after having played this incredible game. The biggest disappointment is how they completely misused the cliffhanger that we were left at the end of Mafia 2. It was such a devastation, of course, seeing Joe taken away, given the friendship that was built between him and Vito throughout the game. But it still did leave a question in our minds of what really happened, and we were expecting this to be explained in the next game. But then we got a completely different storyline that was so far removed from this game, with little anecdotal notes of Vito and having him make some small appearances in the next game. But it wasn't what we truly wanted, right? We wanted to see the story continue, see what happened to all the destruction that Vito and Joe laid over the chapters of this game. It was all more or less drops, and I feel like any of the fans of this game could have written a really compelling storyline with the cliffhanger that they left on. This is one area where I'd love to talk with you all in the comments about what you think could have been done with this game had they continued the story as they should have in Mafia 3. There's a really cool mod called the Mafia 2 Epilogue that sort of closes out the story in the way you'd expect. 
originally there were going to be alternate endings to Mafia 2, um, but for probably budget constraints, they might have cut these out. And it's really disappointing because I think that could have brought a lot more closure to the game. My assumption is they were leaving it open for that next game, but again, it never really happened. In the epilogue mod, it sort of ties out all of those items from the game, like the other bosses who tried to kill you that for whatever reason Vito just let go, which makes no sense given how reckless he had been with everyone else. Vito develops a really short fuse with all of the people that he interacts with throughout the game. Even the most minor offenses, he retaliates extremely with Joe. So again, like I was saying, someone who tries to kill him wouldn't have just been let go without the slightest shred of consideration. This does make for a really exciting game though, in that anytime something happens, there's always this major retaliation. And it makes for some really cool missions and really exciting storyline plot arcs. I really wish more developers would take inspiration from a game like this. There's this idea now that every game has to be 40, 50 hours long and has to have this extremely massive open world. That's really not the case. I feel that I appreciate games more that are very focused on story and a linear story at that. It is cool when games are more open because there can be a higher degree of replayability, but they tend to fall flat because they're not even enjoyable on the first go around because they spent so much of their budget on this open world that feels lifeless because there's no story within it. That's a balance to strike that I feel that 90% of developers completely miss. You could have such a compelling open world, but if the story within it isn't fun, no one's going to go anywhere near the game. I did a little bit of digging into this and noticed that games with big open worlds tend to have very little story completion if you look at like the Steam statistics on their trophy completion. And it's just so telling in that many people, I feel, share the opinion I have that we prefer a linear game with a story that's actually exciting. Open world games do have a place, no doubt. And I know this one very much is an open world game as well, but still follows a beautiful linear story that lets you do things in the open world on the side, but still focuses on that core concept. And I think there's a bit of charm to this game where it sort of sucks you into the story and it leaves minimal distractions over the world. There's cool things you could do to keep you occupied, but you always want to go to the next mission to find out what happens next. If you look at a game like Grand Theft Auto, it's very easy to get sucked into the world, and that's a good thing, but there were times when I felt that I wasn't really that compelled to continue the story, and that's a really big issue, especially given how they concentrate so much on their online platform now. But that's a topic for another video. It's also the set pieces in this game that really set it off, especially when compared to the competition. I always love this mission in the motel with the art deco style and all the breakable glass and everything. This again is an item that is super glitchy in this remaster, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Again, you'll see throughout the video some of the particles are really iffy and glitchy, but when it works, it's super cool. And this was especially impressive around 2012 when this game came out. The car chases in this game were also done really well. I always loved the driver and sidekick duo with them shooting at the person that you're pursuing. It's so arcadey in style, and it's really unique for modern games, and I like it a lot. It's also something I might add that definitely still holds up today. That's what I found so impressive about this game, even revisiting it now more than 10 years later, and up against today's games, it's still really fun. And I think that someone that jumped into it for the first time never playing it before and only playing modern games, would still agree. That's something that I feel with a lot of games today will definitely not be the case 10 years from now, because they're not even that great in today's market. Towards the end of the game, the visions start to get really exciting, and everything really starts to fall apart. I also really like how in this game, there's a ton of dialogue when going from mission to mission. It gives a lot of backstory and makes otherwise monotonous drives really entertaining and worth doing. Not to mention you get to enjoy the incredible world that they built in this game. I still think that this is one of the best New York remakes I've ever seen. 
even when you compare it to some of the Grand Theft Auto games, like GTA 4. That version is really fun, but it's more gray and lacks the life that this game has created and sort of the energy that New York brings about. Especially given the technical restraints at that time, they did such an incredible job with this and all of the areas are so unique and so well done. There's also so many hints towards what will come later in the game. Like at the beginning of the game where we drive by Vito's future home and he points out that one day he wants to live there right on the waterfront. It's really cool things like this and when you play the game for a second time, you notice a lot of these things that you didn't on the first time around. There are of course some aspects of the game that are really frustrating, like the mission where the Irish gang comes and burns down Vito's house. This was a really great hub, and when you lose it for the first time, it's really frustrating. It does make sense in the greater scope of the game, but if you didn't spend all the money you had up until this point, it's a really big shocker when you lose $20,000. So if there's any advice that I can give, upgrade all of your vehicles before the end of chapter 11. You won't regret that you did. To this day, I don't know why, but it seems like the 2010 to 2015 time frame was just peak video games, and it never was like that before and never will be again. Despite all the technology and the incredibly powerful hardware that new game developers have at their disposal, there's something that's lacking in like every major title I've played recently. Especially when you consider the ancient hardware that they were using when they created games like this. It's so impressive that they were able to do what they did. It's almost like this difficulty and this obstruction gave a passion in them to really push the boundaries of the technology, when now there's basically infinite resources that you have at your disposal. I just can't imagine what a game like this would have been had the technology that exists today been around in 2010. In this next clip, you're gonna see a classic Mafia 2 Definitive Edition glitch, where Joe, instead of sitting on the window, is sitting on an imaginary platform above the car. All of these glitches are very comical, but they really do take you ahead of the game, and I wish they had put a little bit more time into ironing out stuff like this. I mean, come on, I don't know. It, it just, stuff like this happens so frequently, and it was just clearly a lack of effort on the developer's part. Next we'll go a little bit more into some of the set pieces, like when you go to Chinatown and have to fight through the building. All of these areas were really unique from one another, and all of these fights were always so fun, and every time I play them, they never get old. That again speaks to the diversity and setting that I spoke about earlier in this video. Some games get so boring because every single fight feels the same, and although the gunplay is not as great as some other newer titles, it still makes it a ton of fun and it's always worth playing. This mission also acts such a pivotal point in the game, when everything truly starts crashing down on Vito and Joe. This was that one step too far, where they became genuine criminals that were acting so far out of the line of what the Mafia really wanted. After everyone else had turned on Vito, Derek was the last person he could turn to to get the money for the loan shark. But here, Vito finally found out that Derek was the one who killed his father. With this in mind, Vito had no one left, and he finally took him out and stole everything that Derek had. This is another really interesting part of the story, as the same loan shark that Vito paid off at the beginning of the game from his father's debts, he had the same issue at the end. After the disaster that Henry caused with his illegal dealings. Also for context, the 55,000 that he owed to the loan shark would be equivalent to about 655,000 today. Which is absolutely insane that they came up with that money in one day. And here I want to comment on one of the most impressive aspects of this game, especially for its time. This was the physics, geometry, and particle simulation. Although earlier I commented on how glitchy this was, when it works, it still rivals some of the best games out there. In this sequence, you'll see these pillars breaking and turning into rubble, and everything staying on the floor for a really long time despite the load constraints. I was always so amazed by this, and I still don't know any games that utilize it in such a good way. 
it's really a shame that NVIDIA PhysX was not picked up by more developers. I could only count on, like, one hand the number of games that really use this, like Borderlands, the Arkham Knights game, and this, and really nothing else. Um, I know it's intensive, but when it's used right, it's super cool. In this sequence, we see the collectibles, which were the Playboy magazines in this game. To this day, this is one of the most iconic collectibles in any video game ever. I know they went through such intense litigation with Playboy to get the rights for all of this, so I, I just think that was so crazy given the time and the budget constraints on this game. In the final sequence of the game, we're at the observatory, which is such a cool area. As you're fighting towards Falcone, there's waves and waves of enemies, and it's actually one of the more challenging parts of the game. As you'd expect, as this is the culmination of everything in this entire game. There's something about the art style in this area especially that really holds up so well, even for today. It's even reminiscent a little bit of the observatory from Grand Theft Auto V, but I still think the implementation is a lot cooler here, and it's so awesome how you could explore the inside of it. You'll notice if you play this game that, unlike some modern titles, there's actually a fair bit of challenge in the gunplay. Even on easy difficulty, if you're caught off guard by a single enemy, they'll take you out in a matter of seconds. It's a, so it's a super nice departure of some of the automatic win games that we have today that have taken out all challenge. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I put tens of hours into the creation of these documentaries to try and really show them in the best light possible. If there are any other games that any of you are interested in, please put them in the comments down below and I'd be really happy to look into them. And of course, if you like this content, please share it, like, and of course subscribe. It helps me out so much. Three, You're gonna throw One, all that away? Do it! Two.